Aquarius, this is your horoscope for November 2018. First thing to know about November is that Venus, the planet of love and beauty and creativity, is in retrograde until the 16th of November. It sits right on top of your chart, in your ninth house, on top of the midheaven. So if you're someone who's creative, who works as a tailor, a florist, a jewelry designer, if you've been feeling flat and uncreative for the past few weeks, it's not a surprise, it's because Venus is in retrograde, sitting on top of your midheaven. So don't quit your job, it's Venus. On the 16th it will wear off and the love you have for the things that you usually do will return. Now, the first day of November you've got the moon in Leo in your seventh house, so there can be something very um, passionate or potentially an argument in one of your relationships. Make sure it's something passionate and lovely. That's a better experience. On the 2nd and 3rd of November, the moon goes into Virgo and it goes into your 8th house of institutions and anything that's bigger than you. So that means the self in connection with a school or a hospital or uh, government or the other side and the moon in Virgo is like a sponge it downloads information so the 2nd and 3rd of November if you're looking for information whatever it is you want to download you will find it on the 2nd and 3rd so if you want to play detective and you need some info those are the best day to use to get that info from the 4th of November onwards until the 30th of November Mars, the male principle, that is in your sign of Aquarius at 23 degrees in your first house. So you feel quite free at the moment to do as you please. And Jupiter is in your 10th house of career in Scorpio. So Jupiter is at 29 degrees in Scorpio in your 10th. It says, I'm going to give you loads of good luck if you work towards helping other people by using your spiritual energy. And Mars says, I want to use my logic and my intelligence to help people and be a humanitarian. And that'll give me a sense of freedom. So there isn't really much friction. Both of them are working together for the greater good. So the progressed midheaven and sun are also in Scorpio in your 10th house. So the biggest luck factor that you have this month Aquarius is your career and because you have such good intentions your career is really thriving and will really do well on the fifth and sixth you've got the moon sitting next to Venus in Libra remember that Venus is in retrograde so because the moon is your soul and how you feel because it joins Venus it kind of mitigates the negative effect of Venus and the fifth and sixth you have the opportunity to travel and to meet people and to have genuine connections that will last rather than that are fake and phony and just don't mean very much. On the 7th of November, we've got the new moon in Scorpio and that happens in your 10th house of Korea. The midheaven and Jupiter are also there. So it's pulling loads of Scorpio energy in. Scorpio is about identifying what the problem is and transforming it so that it becomes reborn. It's like the phoenix rising from the ashes. So with that new moon, set intentions. What is it that I feel about my work? What is it that I want to do? How can I heal other people? How can I help other people? And if you are an Aquarius who wants to help other people, you get a lot of answers. But also, if you are spiritual and you want to be a spiritual teacher or you're creative, you want to be a piano player or a saxophonist or um, you are intuitive, so you want to be a psychic or an astrologer, an intuitive astrologer, you have the choice and the opportunity and the good luck here via Jupiter in the midheaven to pull lots of energy in to discover what your choice is when it comes to work. So if you're someone who's not sure what they ought to be doing work-wise, the seventh is going to make that really clear for you. I'll make separate videos on the new moon and the full moon. Check those out. But the main thing is for you to guys to know Aquarius is that it happens in your 10th house of career. So that's how it affects you. On the 8th and 9th and 10th, we've got the moon in your 11th and Sag. So that's a great time to spend with friends, socializing and traveling. On the 11th, 12th, 13th, 
we have got the moon in Capricorn joining Saturn in Capricorn, Pluto in Capricorn and the rising in Capricorn. So spiritually you're very strong and you're, you're working hard at making spiritual progress. From the 11th, 12th and 13th of November you will find that connection comes very easily and you feel super soothed and calmed by it. And because of that, the 14th of November and the 15th, those are your two days to create whatever it is that you've been working on and that you've wanted to use to put you in the spotlight and that helps other people and that allows you to be a humanitarian. So if you're a vicar and you have the best speech, the best um, um, sermon that you've ever written, um, present it on the 15th. It's the best day for it. If you're a writer and you're submitting a screenplay, submit it on the 15th. It's the best day to do it. Now, a lot of stuff goes on on the 16th. First of all, Venus goes direct. Venus is the planet of love and beauty. So that going direct makes love and connection with other people much more easy. Then Mercury, the communication planet, goes retrograde today. So communication and transportation now become more difficult and stifled. And finally, Mars, the male principle, goes out of your sign of Aquarius and moves into Pisces in your second house. Now you've got Mars, the Moon, Neptune and Chiron in Pisces in your second house. So make sure, Aquarius, that from the 16th onwards, you don't give all your money away to charities and good causes because you're going to be feeling very, very generous and very compassionate and you've got to make sure that charity begins at home and that you can pay your electric and your water before you give more to charity, okay? You have to be able to take care of yourself. Expect some surprises on the 19th and 20th, good surprises. Uh, someone might take you on a trip or um, ask you to be part of something they've planned. Uh, Family-wise and friend-wise, the 21st of November the 22nd of November, it's really, I mean, I know we're in November now, so there's no barbecues really. But if, if it was sunny and warm, this would be a barbecue day to spend with friends, chatting. Um, so go to a nice pub that's really warm and well lit and just enjoy yourself. And, uh, you know, just take this day to really chill and relax and spend with friends. The 23rd of November is when you have the full moon in Gemini in your fifth house. Now the full moon, separate video on that again, I'll, I'll go into more detail, but it happens in your fifth house of romance and romantic relationships. And a full moon is when a moon releases all of its energy and it showers us with Gemini energy. And if you look at Gemini, it's a Roman numeral two. It's a glyph that looks like a doorway and it means for you that if you're single, you're going to be able to go through doorways now that will lead to permanence in your romantic life. The moon is at four degrees. So date around this time from the 23rd onwards, 23rd, uh, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th. All of those are really great days for you to meet someone new. I know it's a Venus retrograde or it was re Venus retrograde earlier in the month. So Venus is no longer retrograde. So that's perfect. You can meet someone. I know that Mercury is retrograde, but that doesn't really matter in terms of meeting your soulmate or the, the person you're going to end up with. Mercury just affects communication and transportation. So if it's your soulmate, you'll overcome a Mercury retrograde, you'll meet each other, it'll be fab. So that those last couple of days in um, November are really important. The final day of November, 30th, you've got the Moon in Virgo in your 8th house and it opposes Mars and Neptune in your 2nd. So it's an opportunity to download more spiritual information and then to put that abstract information, those ideas into some sort of practical format. And it's important not just to listen, but also do, to be productive and creative this month, Aquarius. Okay. So that's what I get for you in November. I hope it gives you an idea of what you'll be working with. If you'd like a personal reading with me, please visit the website. It's gregoryscott.com. Click on the readings tab to order your reading. 
In my personal readings, I draw up your birth chart. That's like a blueprint of your soul. It shows me what your soul purpose is, so your life purpose, where you've been in past lifetimes, what your vocational aptitudes are, so what kind of jobs you'd excel at, um, what's destined for you in love and money, communication, family, relationships, spiritual progress, moving, traveling, if you have any questions, I can answer those. So if you're interested, get in touch via the website. Please remember to subscribe to this channel. I do live tarot readings on here. So subscribe and make sure the bell is on so you're notified when I come on live so I can answer your questions for free. So remember to subscribe. Have a wonderful November and I'll speak to you next month.